Hey guys, this is Ross with Hamel Pro Studios, and I am back with a new and improved GoPro workflow tutorial. So I've done this once before, and I was watching it back this morning and found out that I was missing just a little bit of information. So I'm going to run through all of this again. I'll try to make it quick. So I see a lot of questions posted in different forums and Facebook groups asking how to manage GoPro footage and a lot of people will take their footage and dump it straight into their NLE you know DaVinci Resolve or Premiere whatever and then they will actually uh, edit the raw files down and render them from there but I find that to bog my system down a lot of times because the footage is so compressed so I actually go through the process that GoPro recommends and run everything through GoPro Studio. And what this does is it takes the H.264 and using proprietary algorithms, it will convert it to either a .avi or a .mov. And the codec is technically Cineform that GoPro has purchased and licensed. So GoPro Studio is free. You can find it either on their website or if you take a card that's been formatted in the GoPro camera and you go to the root of that drive, there is a link that will take you to the page where you can download the software. So what we do is we import our files. And if you have multiple files, it'll show all up here. And this clip is 13 minutes long. I really don't want to work with a 13 minute clip. so. Uh, and after it's decompressed, it's really it just takes up a lot of space. So I'm gonna go here, set my mark at about 15 seconds because you know this will be this will be a good enough clip for the example. And I go to my advanced settings. I typically leave my image size on source, frame rate on source, and I you know speed up. I I don't do that under normal circumstances. File format I always go with .avi and uh, I believe you can select dot move, but I have a bug in my GoPro that won't allow it to convert to a dot mov file for reasons unknown. And then I select high for my quality. I want the highest quality possible. Sometimes I'll remove fisheye, other times I don't, but I always leave remember settings checked. That way I don't have to go through all of this for every clip every time I open the program. So I'm going to click OK right here I can select the directory that I want this to go to I have this right now going to an SSD so hopefully the conversion will be a little bit faster and I'll click add clip to conversion list and right here it says that it's waiting and if we had multiple clips we'd already set the in and out points and such then we would just highlight all of those click the button here and then it would automatically add them all to the conversion list and once you click convert all it will go through and convert the clips one by one so I'm going to go ahead and select that now let this process and once it's done it will say completed right here so let's give it just a minute and it's my speculation that the reason it takes so long after it reaches 100 percent is that it's preparing all the metadata that is available in these Cineform clips so we'll just wait for a second while we wait on this to complete. And there we have it. It is complete. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click proceed to step two. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, the step two process is really designed for if you're editing or doing any basic color correction in GoPro Studio. I don't normally do that, but it's worth looking at this to see what some of your options are. I'm going to click go to step two and it gives you a bunch of these templates uh, I almost never use any of these because our projects are a little more custom made than uh, these cookie cutter things that they provide but you know if you've got a little vacation reel or something then this is perfectly fine so I'll select a blank template go to create and it gives me an empty timeline here and the first thing we notice is look how much more contrasty that is that's because whenever it converts it it automatically assigns it 
a video profile. So you can select ProTune and that gives you a little bit of contrast and a little bit of saturation. But if you want to leave that undone, if you don't want it to assign that profile automatically, you can just click None. And when you take this clip into either Premiere or Resolve or whatever your NLE is, it'll just come through with the same flat settings that you recorded with if you recorded in Pro Tune. Now, this isn't always a bad thing. I believe we can you know, pick our white balance so there's something gray there. I can actually select that. I know that was gray. So that's gonna do a pretty good job of balancing for us. And if you so wanted, you could you know, add contrast and I believe yeah there's our saturation right there so you know you, you dial this in if you want I typically don't ever do this so or, or you could turn the contrast all the way down and end up with an image so flat that it's uh, completely useless so I'm just gonna click defaults there and it's gonna take us back to none now you can right there do the same thing you can either do it down in the timeline or you can do it up here select a none and that will take it to default but that's in those are a few extra steps that aren't necessary and they're kind of annoying after a while uh, I appreciate you know GoPro wasn't really designed for professionals using this in a professional workflow this is a consumer camera that they wanted to give people you know some drag and drop options and you know that's perfectly fine so what we do is we can bypass step two completely and <clears throat> the way we do that is we open up and this I don't know how this operates in Mac OS because I'm on a Windows platform but the system should be the same so what happens is we have active metadata that follows this clip around so whatever you do within GoPro Studio will actually translate in your NLE so whether you're working with Premiere or DaVinci Resolve if you apply one of these looks that's always going to follow it and that's not really helpful for most people if you're wanting to grade so what we can do is we click on the GoPro icon and you go to the active metadata and I wish they made this a little easier to work with but you just uncheck all of these 3D corrections primaries 3D looks lookup tables and what you end up with is it leaves all that metadata behind it's still there but it doesn't make it active so if I take this and I find my clip so let's just go here to my H drive and there is there's my clip so if I take that and go into an NLE and drop it in it keeps the flat look now if I activate that stuff it takes the look in with it but since I prefer to do my color grading in DaVinci I always leave all of these options unchecked so you just deselect all of your active metadata and you're good to go you can correct and balance grade do whatever you want and it ends up looking really really good and you're dealing with a higher quality file so your NLE is going to respond faster it's going to render faster rather than a compressed H.264 file so hopefully this helps you out and will you'll give you a jump start on how to process your GoPro footage in a way that you can use its uncompressed nature with all the power of your NLE or your color grading software.